Welcome to the geology classroom here at Ellen Hancock College students. I'm Professor Frida Schroeder and I want to talk to you today a little bit about the courses that we have here and the new geology transfer degree program that will be starting in the fall. If you take a quick peek at the slide you can see an image of students on a oceanography field trip that we took to Avila Beach looking at some really old ocean rocks called pillow basalts that were formed a few hundred million years ago. These are one of the trips that you could take in the courses that we offer here at Aaron Hancock College. Today I want to talk about not only the courses and kind of the opportunities that you'll have in terms of fieldwork, but also the degree program and the career opportunities that you would have as a geologist. To get started, we should talk a little bit about what geology is. Geology is the study of the earth, obviously, and when most people think of geology, they think of rocks. We definitely look at rocks and we study rocks, but that's just the beginning. We also want to study the materials that make up the earth, not just the rocks. Things like soils and water and ice and snow as well. And understanding how these materials provide resources such as oil and gas. Here we see a cross section of different layers of rocks and you can see how it traps the oil and gas and how the wells are set up to extract that. You may not know this, but in the central coast and most of central California, we're underlain by a rock formation called the Monterey Formation that houses one of the largest oil and gas reservoirs in the world, not just our country. And you can learn a lot more about that in the classes here. And on Hancock. We also study structure of the rocks, how the rocks are laid down. Here we see some shales and mudstones, two types of rocks that are laid down horizontally. Um, sometimes these rocks can get deformed and folded, but what we're going to be studying is the processes that make that happen in the geology courses. And as a professional geologist moving forward, it's important to understand structure, not just the rocks that make up the earth. We also study physical processes that act on our earth materials. Here we see an image looking up at Mount Whitney from the valley in the eastern Sierras, right? And you can see that we have this light gray rock, which we call granite, and it's been worn down by processes caused by rainfall and wind, creating these pointy spires and the shapes that we see as we look along the eastern Sierra Nevadas. Chemical processes are important as well. We also study earthquakes, the science of seismology, not only trying to understand where we have earthquakes, but perhaps even when we're going to have our next big earthquake here in California. Chemical processes are important for understanding formations of features like caves. Caves are formed when limestone rock is dissolved by rainwater. And these processes take thousands to tens to hundreds of thousands of years, but help us to understand the processes that are important on the surface of the earth. We also study the history of life forms, better known as the study of fossils or paleontology. Fossils such as this trilobite here, um, our new historical geology class will investigate the different types of fossils and the different earth periods they represent and why that's important. All right, so let's move on now and talk a little bit about the courses we have here at Alan Hancock College. We have a variety of interesting courses that are both transferable to CSU or UC, but also can lead you towards an associate degree for transfer in geology, but also the physical geology course is a course that many engineers need to take. So we do see a lot of engineering students in that course. So this physical geology course includes both lecture and lab and includes field trips as part of the curriculum. We go to places such as Lompoc and to the Pismo Beach area to look at the various rocks and the processes that have acted on them. And of course, in that geology course, you will do mineral and rock identification. As I said, a lot of what most of you associate with geology. As part of the degree program, we also have a historical geology class that focuses on processes that have acted in the past. So not just looking at fossils, but also 
the origins of a lot of the rocks that we see here in California and throughout the world. This is also a lecture with a lab format, and both of those courses are transferable to the CSU and UC system. And so here is a shot of some ammonite impressions. So you'll be looking at fossils and other types of structures and rocks as part of that historical geology course. One of my favorite classes is the oceanography class, which is, which is what we are offering this fall. And this course also includes two full day field trips um, that are scheduled once the course starts. One of those goes to the Guadalupe Dunes area and the other goes to the Pismo Beach, Avila Beach area as well. This course helps us to understand mostly the physical aspects of the oceans like waves, tides, erosional processes that form those beautiful features that we see along the California coastline. And starting next year, the oceanography class will be offered with a lab as well, which is also counts towards a physical science um, lecture and lab if you're thinking about transferring to a four-year university. So some of the things that physical oceanographers do is study the chemistry of the water. So here we see something called a rosette sampler, which is being lowered into the ocean to take um, samples to measure salinity, dissolved oxygen, nutrient levels. It can also measure things like temperature and current. Another one of my favorite classes is the environmental geology class. This class not only works for geology majors, but also for environmental science majors and also engineering majors. Here you're learning more about the interactions of humans with the um, earth, especially the um, our earth materials and the impacts that we've had and that are continued to have moving forward. And here you can see we have some geotechnical engineers that are studying the earth materials here prior to building to help to understand what kind of structures can be built there and any kind of modifications that will need to be made. We also have a field studies program that we'll be restarting next year, visiting places such as the Eastern Sierra Nevadas, sometimes Death Valley, sometimes the Western Sierra Nevada and other locations to be determined in the future. These field trips will be four days in length and we do have a very um, well-funded scholarship program for students that are interested in going on these four-day field trips. If you have any questions about the field studies programs that are coming in the future, please let me know and contact me. But these courses are the best way to learn geology because you get to go out into the field and see the things that we're talking about rather than just looking at them at overheads and, and reading about them in the books. So here's one of the locations that we visit when we're in the Eastern Sierras. This is called Fossil Falls. This is a volcanic um, rock from a volcanic lava flow called basalt and it left behind this plateau that was cut by the rivers that were flowing much more um, rapidly um, in our Earth's history about 8,000 years ago and they were able to cut through the rock and leave behind um, valleys and waterfalls that you can see if there's water at the time of our visit. So again, this is the Eastern Sierras again, and we're looking at fossil falls here. We do also offer a physical science course that is a lecture and lab called Earth in the Universe. Um, um, a lot of students that are entering teaching take this course, and it not only covers geology, but also covers astronomy as well. And this course is offered in the spring. I didn't mention when those other courses are offered, but just to give you a kind of a quick recap, the um, physical geology is offered every semester. Historical geology will be offered in the spring. Um, oceanography will be offered generally in the fall, hopefully every semester moving forward um, if we can. And environmental geology is also planned to be scheduled in the spring. And then the field studies courses, we hope to offer one in the, in the fall, excuse me, and the spring, and then perhaps moving towards a longer summer trips to places like the Colorado Plateau or even Hawaii. All right, so hopefully you're still with me here. Um, I just wanna talk briefly about the new degree program. 
Um, we have just established a geology associate degree for transfer and associate of science for transfer. And I'm going to talk about why you might consider um, enrolling or um, working towards this degree program. Right. So this is a transfer degree. What does that mean? That means that you are guaranteed acceptance to a CSU or UC. It may not be your first choice, but you are guaranteed acceptance to at least one. And um, you will have the preparatory coursework that you need in addition to learning the foundations of geology and also gaining some field experience. So in the top photo, you can see students um, looking at the sands at the Guadalupe dunes and trying to determine not only the structures that we see in the sands, such as sand dunes, but also the source of the sediments that make up the sand and where they came from and how it may differ from other beaches as well. Another um, kind of exercise or field component that we're going to be implementing into the oceanography class is doing beach profiles where we're gonna study how the amount of sand on the beach changes from year to year by doing beach surveys and collecting that data and maybe working towards kind of a long-term mini research program there as well. In the photo below, we're looking at erosion on a beach in Shell Beach and how waves are eroding the coastline and creating a lot of issues for the homeowners there. And also looking at a really nice section of the Monterey Formation, which I talked about before, as I mentioned, which is one of the largest oil and gas bearing formations in the world. So during the degree program, you're gonna have exposure to a lot of field experience, but you're also gonna learn, like I said, the foundations of geology, but also it's gonna enable you to transfer directly into an earth science program at um, California State Colleges. So, now that I've talked a little bit about what we have to offer here, how can I, I want to give you some advice on how you could succeed in our program, right? So, a lot of students um, come out of high school, especially post-COVID here, not really sure kind of what they need to do to kind of maximize their chances at success in courses. So, I just want to point out a few things and talk a little bit about that. One of the most important things that you can do for your classes is to be prepared. And that means completing your um, pre-lab assignments if you have a lab, completing your reading before the, you know, the week so that you're prepared for the material that you're looking at, um, coming prepared to take notes, printing out any outlines that your instructors may provide. I do that in my classes for students so that they can have an outline or uh, slides to bring to class and preparing for any group activities or labs that you may have in the class. So that's really important. And a good way to do that um, is, like I said, to make sure that you do your reading always. A lot of students, you know, have a hard time getting their reading done before class, but that's really important. But also any research that you may do for assignments and getting those homework assignments in on time as well. I think it's also very important to participate in class. And when I say participate, I don't mean to show up and listen to your instructor and ask a question here and there. I mean to be actively engaged in discussions, not only with your professor, but with your students as well. I like to use small group collaborations to help students work on their assignments and projects, but also to help them better understand concepts that we're talking about in class. So, Make sure that you're getting involved, right? But yes, ask lots of questions, but also share ideas with fellow students as well. This is an important skill that you'll carry on to your career wherever you may go, um, because it's really important to be able to work with others to succeed, not only in the classroom, but also in your professional life. I think that organization is one of the most uh, kind of underrated aspects for success. Um, that means creating a schedule, right and organizing your course materials in such a way that you are best prepared for taking exams and preparing papers or projects as well i always recommend to students particularly those that are struggling that they have a uh, kind of a study schedule that they stick to every week certain days and times where they're working on their course materials I also strongly recommend that they spread this out. Um, it's better to study a little bit every day than all in one day, because if you're studying every day a little bit, then you have a better chance of 
retaining the material that you're learning. And repetition is another way to retain a lot of this material that you're learning in class as well. And last but not least is taking care of yourself, right? You're not going to do well in class if you're not getting enough sleep. Um, and eating well and exercising, things like that. Try to keep yourself healthy so that you are in top form so when you come to class you're focused and ready. Participate and get your work done. Um, I realize that a lot of students do have families and they have jobs, but it's important to think about that when you're putting together your course load to make sure that you can dedicate yourself not only to your courses, but also to the other important parts of your life. So that's just a few tips from me, from my observations, and also from my experience. The STEM Center has um, workshops, um, the Learning Assistance Program has workshops as well that can help you to kind of create a really solid study program so that you can maximize your chances for success. All right, so to finish up, I want to talk a little bit now about why you should maybe pursue a degree in geology or take classes in geology. I want to talk about the careers in earth science. And to do that, I have a little infographic here, which is a little hard to see, but I kind of will talk through that for a few minutes. But I also want you to watch a really short video, five minute video that talks about the careers in earth science. And when we talk about earth sciences, we're not just talking about people that are out there hammering rocks and trying to identify where the rocks are or find where there's oil deposits or gas deposits, right? Geologists' careers span from governmental agencies to private companies um, to the academia, right? working at universities and things like that. There are geologists that work in business. There are geologists that work in public policy in um, Washington, D.C. So it's not just about studying the rocks. Geologists do important work like studying groundwater here in California, which is a really important issue for us because that's where a lot of our water comes from, particularly if you live in Santa Maria, right? So um, kind of formal term for that is a hydrogeologist, but that's an example of a geoscience career that may not be just looking at rocks, right? So that kind of wraps up my part of this presentation. Um, I do want to show the short vi video that talks about careers in earth science in a little bit more depth. Um, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, again, I'm Professor Frieda Schroeder. If you have any questions about the program, if you have any questions about the courses or even about careers or anything else, um, I'd love to talk to you and discuss kind of the options that you have and kind of the opportunities that we have here for you at Ellen Hancock College. So I'm going to go ahead and start this video and then we'll finish up and I'll um, throw my email back up on the slides and so you can reach out to me if you'd like. Students, and even professors, may not be aware of how many different opportunities there are for geoscience graduates. Here we will explore both common geoscience occupations as well as unique ones that result from winding career paths. Interestingly, many of these lesser known occupations can have high prestige and impact on society and are often associated with lucrative salaries. This infographic paints a bigger picture of the geoscience workforce and provides examples of these unique career opportunities. Use it to explore how to integrate your geoscience interests with other disciplines, passions, and hobbies. In this way, you can pursue a geoscience career that uniquely fits you. Now, let's break this down into its different components. Notice the five inner rings of the image, research, industry, government, academia, and nonprofit. This is a representation of the five different sectors of the geoscience workforce. A professional in the research sector conducts science that is critical to informing and expanding the current boundaries of our existing knowledge. In fact, these individuals create new knowledge that fundamentally shapes the geosciences. Research takes place in a variety of venues, including national labs, research consortiums, research divisions in corporations, or at universities. The industry circle represents all the different kinds of private, 
for-profit organizations. This is expansive and can include geotechnical consulting firms, energy companies, law firms, professional services companies, technology companies, and everything in between. The geosciences touch all levels of government as well, the federal, state, local, and tribal governments. Examples of federal government agencies that hire geoscientists include the U.S. Geological Survey and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Academia spans all of education from K-12 through up through college, graduate degrees, postdoctoral programs, teaching at all levels, and the professoriate. Lastly, nonprofits in the geosciences can include geoscientific professional societies or university-governed national facilities. These organizations have specific missions to advance their scientific objectives and may do so through the creation of education and outreach resources, writing scientific reports, designing and maintaining earth monitoring equipment, or by hosting conferences. Radiating out from those five central circles are gray wedges with the titles of the different fields of interest. These can be aligned with the topics that we previously discussed about our other passions and hobbies, and we'll talk about this in the next segment. Let's continue exploring the Geoscience Careers infographic to learn more about the different fields of interest. In policy, geoscientists play a key role in informing and creating legislation that directly impacts our national health, safety, and security. The key objective is to inform policymakers of the important geoscience topics that affect us today. Strong communication skills are important in general, and writing is key to sharing critical information with stakeholders about geoscience findings, challenges, and their solutions. Not only are there opportunities for technical writing, but also writing for the public, like in magazines or even novels. If you're interested in education, this spans the whole gamut from K-12 education, informal education at museums and libraries, or through outreach programs and at the post-secondary level. Geoscientists can even work in medicine, and it's a surprise, isn't it? There's a growing field of medical professionals who specialize in environmental health concerns and illness, and geoscientists who work on natural hazard-related humanitarian crises. If this topic interests you, check out the International Medical Geology Association or Geoscientists Without Borders. The Science Wedge is purposefully broad to capture many different geoscientific occupations. Have a look at these and see if any of them spark your interests. Artists with geoscience backgrounds have unique opportunities in the workforce to combine their technical understanding of complex science concepts with their highly creative and visual skills. Engineering combined with geoscience can lead to innovative and lucrative career paths that have direct impacts on society. If you have an interest in the legal system or in criminal justice, but still want to be connected with the sciences, this may be a potential pathway for you. Jew scientists work in business as well, and this could include large multinational corporations or small privately owned businesses. The key takeaway here is that Jew scientists can be found in every discipline and sector of the workforce. Inside the wedges are examples of geoscience occupations. We encourage you to take these examples and explore all that the geosciences have to offer. And remember, the best careers are those which combine your educational interest with your other passions and hobbies. 